All right, let's get started on this review. There are 15 questions. This is for probability. Consider the following two events for an individual. A owns a cell phone, B owns a laptop computer. Translate each event into words. So A with a little C on top of it. Let me see if I can do that here. Uh, does it let me do an exponent? Probably not. So if I were to write it, let me go ahead and do text. A C, and I'll write the C in later, means not A. So let me go ahead and I'll just hand draw a little C right there. A, C, uh-oh, you can't see it. Pretend it's, we'll just move this. Sorry. A, C means not A. All right, so that's the complement of A. So these are the review notes. I will have a link in the reviews that you can check out and download these, maybe add them to your cheat sheet. So um, since A is owns a cell phone, A, C means does not own a cell phone. And let's see, A is owns a cell phone, B is owns a laptop. A and B, which you saw in the notes, we've got A and B, we've got A or B, and A given B. So, going back to our problem, A and B owns a cell phone and owns a laptop. A or B owns a cell phone or owns a laptop. There's no nots, there are no Cs, so most of these do not apply. A given B owns a cell phone given they own a laptop. There we go. And B given A owns a laptop given they own a cell phone. That would be right there. Okay. And we can go check our answers. And voila, all five are correct. Okay. There is no money to send uh, of uh, four of seven city council members to a conference in Honolulu. All want to go, so they decide to choose members. So there is money to send four out of seven. All want to go, so they decide to go to choose members to go to the conference by a random process. How many different, oh, by the way, it says combinations of four council members can be selected from seven. So you'll definitely want to hit the staplet. Let me go ahead and add that in. Staplet.org, or com, sorry. And we are in counting methods, and they said four of seven, so n is seven. We're choosing out of seven, we're choosing four. Now you can do factorial, which is pretty big. There's permutations if order matters, but the council members don't care who, go, who gets picked first as long as they're one of the four to go. So we actually want combinations. So it's seven, choose four combinations, which is 35. All right, let's go ahead and check that one. There we go. All good. Suppose, oh, let me go ahead and make a note. Use combinations when order doesn't matter. All right. So that's my note for number two. Use NCR when order doesn't matter i.e. choosing people to go to Hawaii. Hawaii. All right. Back to our next problem. Suppose a newspaper states that the probability of rain today is 65%. What is the complement of the event rain today? So that would be not rain today. That's the complement. What is the probability of the complement? Notice it says enter your answer to two decimal places. I'm going to say 0.35. It's 35%. And how did I get that? 100% minus 65% is 35%. But then you have to do decimal. So you know, pretty sure it didn't say percent there. So I thought that was kind of weird. That's not my question. That's the book's question, all right? Don't blame me. So they decided to go from percent to decimal. A little odd. Okay, John runs a computer software store. Yesterday, he counted 131 people who walked by the store, 53 of whom came into the store. Of the 53, only 26 bought something in the store. Estimate the probability that someone who walks by the store will enter the store. All right, so if we're doing, uh, let me go ahead and copy this. I'm going to copy it over to my 
problem. And, all right, so there's the problem. So we can work it here because we'll need to do a little bit of work. So we want the probability. So uh, let's see. We want the probability someone who walks by the store will enter the store, right? Enter. Well, that's going to equal. Okay, let me put these symbols up. That's going to equal how many people actually enter. Um, 53 out of uh, 131, whatever that is. So let me go Google math. 53 divided by 131, since I don't have my calculator on it, 0 0.4046. 0 0.4046. Oh, they only want 0. Point. Technically, you're probably going, but wait a second. They only did um, three, two decimal places. Doesn't hurt to put in an extra one. Although I wonder if I should have said 4046. All right. Yeah, it took it. See, it'll take three. It'll take extra. There's a hint for you. All right. Estimate the probability that the person who walks into the store will buy something. Okay. So let me copy this problem part B over here to go back to my cami. So this was part A, right? So we want probability. Oh my goodness, why am I hitting all these buttons? Go away. All right, so we know that probability of buy given the answer. All right, so that means that is equal to, well, how many people buy? Let's say buy by total entered. All right, so we'll change that to numbers, which is how many people did buy 26 divided by 130, no, not 130, 53. Back to our Google Math, 26 divided by 53, 0.491. So we'll put that in the problem, 0.491, and we'll check it. By the way, um, I strongly recommend when you do these, you just go ahead and check each answer as you go, instead of like doing a bunch of them and checking, because that way you find out if you're on the right track before you go much further. Estimate the probability that a person who walks by the store will come in and buy something. All right, great question. So let me copy this down, go back to my cami. All right, so that means that we're looking at probability of buy and enter. And this is out of everyone, all right? So this is going to be out of the grand total. So it's going to equal, really, it's um, buy. We'll come in, as really, it's enter and buy. So that's the number of people who enter and buy divided by total. All right. There's no given. All right. So we can just say how many people actually entered and bought something? Only the 26 out of 131. All right. So when I put that in, now you and I will have, uh, let me look at the problem. You and I will have different numbers. So you're going to have to figure out these yourself. But the good news is we're walking you through it. 26 out of 131. 0.198, so I'll put 0.198 in my answers. All right, submit. And there we go. And then finally, part D, estimate the probability a person who comes into the store will buy nothing. So let's go back to my cami. All right, so who are these people? Uh, probability of no buy given they entered. All right, so 
that means my total is going to be the number of people who entered. So it's going to equal no buy divided by entered. Well, 26 bought something. So how many didn't buy something? Well, that's 53 minus 26 divided by 53. 53 minus 26, I'm getting 27. All right, so it should be very similar to that answer, just a little bit bigger. 27 divided by 53. 55.509. Uh, 50, And we'll go ahead and calculate it or check it. And voila. There you go. Hopefully that helped. Again, remember these numbers are red because they're all randomized. So you guys will have completely different questions. Isn't that lovely? All right. So yeah, I can have this exact same question on the test. It's on the review. But you just have to understand what are you doing for each of these types of questions. On a single toss of a fair coin, the probability of heads is 0.5 and the probability of tails is 0.5. If you toss a coin twice and get heads on the first toss, are you guaranteed to get tails on the second toss? Of course not. Each outcome is equally likely. All right. Easy, freebie if you get it. Does it pay to ask for a raise? This is a good question. Make sure you understand this one. A national survey of uh, heads of households showed the percentage of those who asked for a raise um, and the percentage who got one. According to the survey of the women interviewed, 25% had asked for a raise. And of those women who had asked for a raise, 46% received it. If a woman is selected at random from the survey population, women find the following probabilities. Oh, the probability she asked for a raise is 0.25. All right. And then, here I'm going to copy this part. Probability she received a raise, given she asked one. That one's actually pretty easy, too. All right. 0 0.46. All right. Now, the next one, the probability she asked for a raise and received a raise. So what that means, so first of all, this is 0 0.46 because... It says, of the women who asked for a raise. So given that she asked for a raise, she had a 46% probability of getting it. If a woman selected at random, so then how many of the women asked for a raise? Well, 46% of the 25%. So you have to multiply these two together. So we'll have to go to Google Math. 0.46 times 0.25, right? 0.115. And again, I did that by multiplying 0.46, do not do percents, change them to decimals. Did you see how I did that? I changed them to decimals before I put them in. All right, let's go ahead and check our work there. And voila, all three are correct. So A and B are super gimmies. C, just remember that you're taking 46% of the 25%, which means you multiply them. All right, consider the following events for a driver selected at random from the general population. A, the driver is under 25 years old. B, the driver has received a speeding ticket. Translate each of the following phrases into symbols. The probability has dri the driver has received a speeding ticket and, and, and is under 25 years old. So if we go look at my notes, which are right near the top, and is that symbol right there. All right, so let's go back. And, oh, they didn't even have the symbol. I thought they were going to have the symbol. They did words. Okay. And the probability that the driver who is under 25 years old has received a speeding ticket. So they're telling you for sure the driver is 20, under 25 years old. That means A is given. The only one that has A given is that one. So the probability of a speeding ticket, B, given you know the driver is under 25 years old, A. The probability a driver who has received a speeding ticket is 25 years old or older. So now we're giving, given they got a speeding ticket, which is B, what is the probability of A? So it would be, oh, wait, wait. Yeah, probability a driver who has received a speeding ticket 
is 25 years. Oh, actually, this one would be 25 years. Oh, this is the complement of A. A complement given B. So I was like, wait, the only one that says given B doesn't have A in front of it. Well, because they said 25 years old or older, that's the complement of A, and they gave you B. The probability the driver is under 25 years old, A, or has received a speeding ticket, so that's just A or B. The probability the driver has not received a speeding ticket, so that's B complement, or is under 25 years old. So we'll go check these. Voila. Okay. M&M Plain Candies come in various colors, according to uh, M&M Mars Department of Consumer Affairs, the distribution for plain M&M candies is as follows. Now, this can't possibly be right because these are actually randomized, but that's fine. Suppose you have a large bag of plain M&M candies and you choose one candy at random. What's the probability of green or blue? So we just add these two in. I'm pretty sure this is a decimal answer. Let's double, because I don't see a percent here. Eight plus seven is 15 percent. So let's make sure on that. Yes, we got that. It is a decimal. So careful, whenever you see these and they give you percents, but they don't put a percent here, that means it's a decimal. Are these outcomes mutually exclusive? No, because you can get green and, oh wait, um, is it mutually, hold on. Are these outcomes mutually exclusive? Yes, you can't get a candy that's green and blue. All right, there we go. Find the probability of ca uh, yellow candy or red. 18 plus 20 is 38. So I'm gonna put 0.38, feeling pretty confident on that one. You can't choose a candy that is yellow and red. So they are not mutually exclusive. Uh, yes, mutually exclusive, sorry. And then finding a not purple candy. Uh, purple candy is 20%. Not purple would be 80%. How did I do that? I just did 100% minus 20%. And make sure it's a decimal. And we'll go ahead and submit all this. Voila. Oops, I missed one. Hold on. Which one did I not read properly? Going too fast. Oh, is possible. There we go. Not possible. There we go. Pay attention. This is why you get two clicks on your test. All right. All righty. Now we go on past the M&Ms. We're up to problem nine. Okay, so this is probably one of the harder ones for you guys. Um, so let's use the following notation for various events. I'm actually going to kind of copy this into my cami. so I can do some notes. And I'm probably going to add a page. So let me see. Where was it that you could add a page? Ah. Give me a second. Where was some place to add a page, right? Mm. Oh, well. Oh wait, it's at the bottom. That's where it is. I know where it is. I go. There we go. See that little button? Voila. Add. All right. So I'm going to put this on the top of the next page because it's going to take up some room. Give it a sec. Oh, I got to pause for a second. All right. Okay, so I went ahead and just copied this whole picture over so I could see it better. So I want the probability of N, no reaction. So that's just going to be the how many are no reactions, which is the 463 divided by the 1,000. So that equals, that one's pretty easy because it's divided by 1,000, 0.463. So I'll go ahead and move that answer. Come on, come over here. So that's for the first one. The probability of M is going to be similar, 0.396, and strong is 0.141, because we're dividing by 1,000. And it's not within five minutes or after five minutes. They just want to know no reaction at all, which means we're looking at the total. So let me go ahead and put those numbers in. 
0.463, then 0 0.396, 0 0.141. All right, so we'll check those just to be sure. <clears throat> you could have just checked the first one, make sure you're not totally, and you can see they're all correct there. So, voila. Now, the probability of no reaction, given that, uh, what did they do? Allergic reactions for poison ivy can be miserable. Plant oils cause the reaction. Researchers at Allergy Institute did a study to determine the effects of washing the oil off within five minutes of exposure. And they did a random sample of a thousand people with known allergies to poison ivy. Well, that's terrible. Oil from the poison ivy plant was rubbed on a patch of skin for 500 of the subjects. They washed it off. I'd want to be in that group. And then for the other 500, the oil was washed off after five minutes. So results are summarized in the following table. So let's go ahead and work out probability of none. Let's see if it lets me. It doesn't like me to do math in here. So probability of none given. I'm just going to write given because it acts funny when I do that. So that means there were 406 out of 500. So how did I get that? Well, 406, and I'm using G because, well, I guess I could try and put that in. It just puts in an extra parenthesis, which is really weird, or an extra line. It thinks I want to do absolute value, which I don't. So probability of no reaction given it was done within five minutes. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and change that to a decimal since I'm right here. 0.812. All right, so 406 divided by 500 should be 0.812. And let me do this. I'm going to copy it. There we go. Copy. And then we'll paste it. We'll do another problem. Come here. All right, and this won't be okay. Let me go back to normal. All right, so, and then we're going to do this other one. Probability is a strong reaction. So not mild, but strong. Was only 41 out of 500. So we're only worried because they said given within five minutes. It's almost like you are basically ignoring all this, and you're just looking at that. All right, I'm going to get rid of that so. I'm using those numbers for other parts of the problem. Let me go ahead and fix this number. That number is not right. <clears throat> 41 would be 0 0.082. All right, so well, that's funny. Very similar numbers. 0 0.812 and 0 0.802. 0 0.812. All right, so let's go and submit. Now, probability, the no reaction after five minutes. So what I would do, there are 57 out of 500. Okay, so I'll do that. Yeah, it wants to do that extra parentheses for some reason. Um, so no reaction after five minutes. So there are 57 out of 500 that had no reaction, which if I double that, 0 0.114, um, I think is what that is. Let me move it so you can see it. Oops. If you double 57, see, I'm changing these two thousands in my head so they work better. All right, and then we have probability of strong, given it was washed off after five minutes. And let me go ahead and move this so I can see it. That would be, how many had a strong reaction? 100 out of 500, which is 20%, or 0 0.200. All right, so I'll go ahead and put those answers in. <coughs> So 0 0.114, 0 0.200. And again, your numbers are going to be different. You see these are all red, so they're randomized. And voila. 
Now we need to do probability of no reaction and within five minutes. So for that, what that means, there's no given here. So I'm going to put it over the total. All right. So let me go ahead. Probability of no reaction. And I might as well use the symbol and within five minutes. So what is that equal to? So how many people had no reaction and they all was washed off within five minutes or 406 out of we're doing the whole total because we're looking at everyone. So it's 0.406. All right. And then mild. And so 53. So it'd be 53 out of 1,000. Let me do this so I can make a copy. There we go. Copy. We'll paste. There we go. Then this one will be, let me get back to normal. So this one is mild reaction and within five minutes. And how many had a mild? 343. And so it'd be 0.343. So I'll put those in. Oops. Oh, I have the wrong number, 53.053. Let me go change that. I didn't count. I went and looked at 343. It was only 53. Three. So this is 0.053. All right. So we'll go ahead and submit those two. And now we're down here, probability of N or M. So what that is, that means the probability of no reaction or a mild reaction, all right? So let me go copy this. Copy, paste, there we go. Grab it, Let's see if I can grab it. There we go. So probability of N or M. Or, yeah, N or, let me grab my or symbol. I'm going to go ahead and use proper symbols just so you know what they look like. Ah, I thought I had it. Uh, did it get in there? Uh, oh, well, so I'm going to write or M then in that case. Well, okay, so now i got to look at how many were... None or mild, that would be 463 plus, and the mild was 396, divided by 1,000, so 463, I'm going to go do Google count, I can't math, 463 plus 396, I could do it in my head, but 859. which is 0.859. All right, so let's go put in that 0.859. Are the rea um, events no reaction and mild reaction mutually exclusive? Yes, they are, because you can't have them at the same time. If I actually did, could I have no reaction and mild reaction in any of these cells together? No, they're always separate. They're always separate. Okay. And then, are the events, no reaction and washing off oil within five minutes, independent? Okay, so here's how you figure this one out. So, for independence, this is something you need to know. For independence, probability of A must be the same as probability of A given B. So that means if I wash off the oil, it has to be the same. So here, probability of no reaction is 4.463, right? So in this case, probability of none equals 0 0.463. But in probability of none, given we washed off the oil, is 0.812. Which makes sense. You think if you'd wash off the oil, that would be a good thing. Why did people do this experiment? So 
Um, are they independent? It's definitely no, and it's because these two things are not equal. So make yourself a note of that. All right, so we are done with problem nine. In fact, we're almost done. Okay, and then finally, voila, everybody's right. Class records at a Rockwood College indicate that a student selected at random has a probability of 0.71 of passing French. For the student who passes French, the probability is 0.78 that he or she will pass French 102. What is the probability they'll pass both? So let me go ahead. I'm going to put the, ah, oh, there's room down here. The probability of passing French 101. What did we say? It was 0.78 maybe? Let's go look. 0.71, then it goes to 0.78. 0.71. And probability of passing in French 102 equals 0.78. Then, now, if these are independent, which I think they said they were, right? Uh, they should say they were independent, but anyways, it doesn't matter. So, probability of passing French 101 and French 102 is equal to the probability of passing French 101 times the probability of passing French 102. So it's just 0.71 times 0.78. And we'll let Google Math do it for us. And I'm getting 0.5538. Sounds about right. All right, number eleven. Okay, a national park is famous for its beautiful desert and its many natural rock formations. The following table is based on information gathered by a park ranger of all rock formations of at least three feet. The height of the rock formation is rounded to the nearest foot. For a rock formation chosen at random, um, does it say how many total? It does not. Okay, so we're going to have to add these up. Um, use the preceding information to estimate the probability the height of a rock formation is three to nine feet. So I need to add up all of these. All right, 11583, let's go. 115 plus 83 plus, and let's see, what's 31, 36, and 12. 31, 36, and 12. 31, 36, and 12. 277. So that's an important number we need to remember. 277. Okay. So there are 115 out of 277. So I'll just do that. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I've been worse. I have the crud. 0.415. Two decimal places. But you can do three. It's okay. And it'll do the rounding for you. And sure enough, we got that one right. I think I can actually click here and it'll take. And there we go. Uh, 30 feet or taller. Oh, so that will be these three together. So let's go 31. Let me go ahead and copy this. So give me a pause. I'm going to copy this so you can see my work. Okay, so first of all, we wanted to make sure we said that the total is 277. Total equals 115 plus 83 plus 31 plus 36 plus 12 equals 277. So that's important to know. Okay. Then the probability of three to nine feet was, we said there are 115 divided by 277, which was 0.415, All right? Then we're gonna do probability of 30 feet or taller. And probability of, I'm gonna call it 30 plus feet equals, well, we got to add in everything that's greater than 30. 31 plus 36 plus 12, and we're going to divide it by the 277, so I needed to go do some math. 
31 plus 36, 67. I'm getting 89. We'll see if I get a wrong answer. You, you will have a calculator if you so choose. We said 87, right? <coughs> so I strongly recommend that you use it. <coughs> 31 plus 36. I might as well, too. Is, oh, 79. What did I say? What? Did I have the right numbers? Let's go see. 31 plus 36 plus 12. Ah, 79. I was... I flipped my 2 and my 1. This is why you use the calculator. Divided by 277. 0.285 sounds good. Alright. 3 to 49 feet. Same idea. Let me go ahead and just make a copy of this. Copy, paste. Alright. Ah, not that one. I wanted this puppy right here. There we go. Uh, oh, I moved this too much. Let's move that back up. There we go. 3 to 39. 49. All right, so 3 to 49 is 115 plus 83 plus 31. Let's go see what that is. Two twenty nine over two twenty seven two seventy seven. So we'll take that number, divide by two seventy seven. Point eight two six now if you're like, oh I don't feel good about rounding it, go point eight two six seven. You can do that. Alright. And then ten to seventy four feet. I think it's going to let me paste that original one. There we go. I'm going to just paste two more in here, just so I can get them in there. All right, so back to normal. Ah, not normal. There we go. We're doing 10 to 74. So 10 would be 83 plus 31 plus 36. 83 plus 31 plus 36. Oops. 150. And 150 divided by 277. 0.5415. 0.542 is fine. And then 75 feet plus. Ah, oh, that's only 12. That one's the easiest one. Don't even need that fraction. What is 12 divided by 277? Point oh four three. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see. I think I left off with point. Where where was I? Oh, I only had the first answer in. So point two eight five. Now hopefully you would write this on a piece of paper. Point eight two six seven. Ten to seventy four feet. Point five four two. And then last but not least, not least point oh four three. And let's go ahead and submit. Oh, actually, I want to go here. Go submit. And then we get to the last problem. Almost to the last problem. There you go. All done. All right. A sales representative must visit seven cities. There are direct connections between each of the cities. Use the multiplication and rule counting to determine the number of different choices the sales representative has to order. So you can go 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Or on counting, it's just that factorial one, 5,040. And I still had the 7. 
So since it's 7, 5,040. Uh, they have 10 entrants in a men's downhill ski event. The coach would like first, second, and third places to go to the team members. And how many ways um, can the 10 team entrants achieve first, second, and third? So we're going to have 10 choose 3. So we have 10, and we want first, second, and third. Position matters. So this is the one you want, 720. This is just if he has um, three of them chosen for something but not necessarily first, which is different from second, which is different from third. So we want permutations on that one, 720. There are 12 qualified applicants for eight trainee positions in a fast food management program. How many different groups of trainees can be selected? You have 12 to choose from and eight to pick. So you've got 12 applicants, you're gonna pick eight. It's four program, you don't care the order, so use combinations, 495. <clears throat> Hopefully these county ones will be really easy for you. And then finally we get to the, oops, 13, let's see. Uh, 10 entrants, 10 times 9 times, oh, I forgot the zero. Type in all your numbers. So then, who else did I miss? There we go. Now we go to problem 15. What is the probability an accident victim survives? Well, that's 893 over 1239. You're probably going, how'd you do that, Mrs. Everton, so fast? 0. 0.721. They're only asking two decimal places. I like, oops, it goes up here. All right, let me get rid of that. Um, so we know that here's the table shows how accident victims were transported to the hospital, the hospital and whether they survived or died. And then they said, what's the probability they survived? So we look at the total survived divided by the total died. What is the complement of survived? Died. What is the probability of the complement of survived? So it's going to add up here. So it's point, you do 1 minus 0 0.721, which is 0.279. All right, and let me go ahead and submit this. And then what is the probability an accident victim is transported by ambulance? You're going to go 1071 divided by 1239. Point eight six four. Oh, up here, point eight six four. What is the probability an accident victim is transported by ambulance and dies? That's going to be 275 out of 1239. 0.222. What is the probability um, an ac accident victim is transported by ambulance or dies. You know what? I'm going to take a quick picture here and show you how I do that one because that one's a little trickier. Okay, so I went ahead and copied it over so you can see all my fractions and divisions that I did. So I'm doing the last one, probability of accident or dies. And part of the reason I wanted to show you this, you can calculate oh wait, ambulance or dies. So it's really tempting to add this number here. Actually, let me do that. You, want, you probably want to add the total for this, right? And you probably want to add the total for that. Only problem is you're double counting that 275. So if you want to do it that way, there are multiple ways to do this problem. You can totally add the totals. All right, so you can say 346 plus 1071, but you need to subtract out that double count, the 275 divided by 1239. All right, the other way you can do it is you can just go through the columns, ignore the total rows. So you can say, I'm going to do 796, actually, let me do parentheses, 796, plus 275 plus 71, divided by 1239. That should give you the exact same answer. So let me see, 340, I wonder if I can just paste this. There we go. And... 1142 oh, yeah. and equals. And let me see, 
let's see if we get the same thing from the other two. So I'm going to paste these three in. And I get 1142. You can see I get the same thing. And then divide that by 1239. 0.922. And we'll go ahead and put that in. 0.922. Submit. And we're done. 53 out of 53 correct. Good luck on your test. Don't forget, you got the cami. Let me go put the 0.922 in here. Again, my answers will not be your answers. And that will be true on test day as well.